Bowling. An introduction. Persons of every age and level of skill can enjoy bowling. Even persons with physical disabilities can bowl by using various kinds of adapters made specifically for them. Bowling is truly a democratic sport, one that almost everyone can learn to play and enjoy. It's a good way to socialize, exercise, and compete all at the same time. History of the game. The history of bowling can be traced back at least 7,000 years. The ancient Egyptians enjoyed a version of the game, as indicated by bowling balls and pins found buried in an Egyptian child's grave. By the 1840s, bowling had become popular in America. The first indoor bowling lanes were built in New York. Abraham Lincoln was among the many famous Americans who enjoyed bowling. The American Bowling Conference, ABC, was founded for men in 1895. A women's organization, the WIBA, was founded in 1916. The two organizations now work together to develop and enforce the rules of the game. The combined membership of the ABC and WIBC was approximately 10 million people in 1992. That's almost 49% of the entire population of America, and it doesn't even count all those everyday bowlers who don't belong to a conference, but who bowl occasionally just for the fun of it. How bowling is done. The bowling alley. Bowling is done in a bowling alley or lane, as it is sometimes called, which is 62 feet 10 inches long and about 41 inches wide. The area where the bowler stands is called the approach area and is 15 feet in length. The foul line separates the approach area from the alley. Nine inch wide gutters run along both sides of the alley. At the other end of the alley, 10 bowling pins stand arranged in a triangular formation as shown on the right. The object is to knock down as many pins as you can each time you send the ball down the alley. The more often you knock all of them down each time you bowl, the higher your score will be. Each pin that is knocked down counts as one point. Each game is divided into 10 frames, during which each player has a chance to knock down the pins. If you knock down all the pins during each frame, you will score 30 points per frame and 300 points for the game. For a novice bowler, a score of 120 or so is considered good. A score between 160 and 180 is good for a regular bowler, while professionals average more than 200 points in a single game. In each frame, the bowler gets two chances unless the first try is a strike, knocking down all the pins at one time. The scores are all marked on a score sheet using symbols as follows. The X. This stands for a strike, which means that all the pins have been knocked down in one turn. The Slash. This stands for a spare, which means that all pins have been knocked down in two turns. A bowler is awarded 10 points plus a bonus of the score on the next roll. If a spare is made on the final frame, one extra roll is permitted. The zero. The zero is used to show a split ball, which occurs when the head pin is down and the remaining pins have another pin down immediately ahead of or between them. Remember that a split leaves pins that are not close together standing, and it is therefore harder to knock them down in one try and an F. This mark means a foul, which happens when a player goes beyond the foul line. A hand or arm, however, may extend over the foul line with no penalty. When a foul occurs, no score is recorded for that shot. Playing techniques. Basic bowling moves. There's a four-step delivery. The bowling pins may be approached in different ways, but the most basic is called the four-step delivery. Here's a summary of each step. Step one, if the bowler is right-handed, he or she should make the following seven movements. First, bend forward. Second, move the right foot forward about 12 inches. Hold the ball forward and to the right. Allow the left hand to leave the ball. Keep the right wrist firm. Keep your shoulders parallel to the target and focus your eyes on the target. Step two, this step focuses on the left foot and right arm. Keep the right arm as close as possible to the body as the ball is swung backwards. Step three, the ball now reaches the peak of the backswing about shoulder height. Keep the movement smooth and deliberate and don't rush. Step four, this step involves 12 movements. First, push forward off the right foot, slide on the front of the left foot, bend the left knee, bend at the waist and lean forward, let the ball swing forward under its own momentum, Keep the right wrist and arm straight. Keep the thumb positioned at 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock for left-handed people. 
The left knee continues to bend as the left foot slides to a stop. The slide is completed a few inches from the foul line. The left foot is pointed straight ahead. The ball is released across the foul line, and finally, the left arm and right foot extend for balance. The follow through. When the ball is released, the thumb comes out first, followed by other fingers. At this point, the arm is a in a forward position and should continue to rise up to shoulder level. Some bowling instructors don't emphasize the follow through, claiming instead that it occurs naturally if the ball is thrown correctly. Other instructors feel that follow through is an important, if, neglect, if neglected, part of bowling. Try both to see which one works for you. There's four basic shots. The four basic shots indicate the way in which the ball rolls down the alley. These four shots are the straight ball, the hook ball, the curve ball, and the backup ball. The straight shot is exactly what its name implies, except that it is rolled down the alley slightly off center in order to hit the first pin at an advantageous angle. The hook shot consistently beats other shots in producing strikes. The hook, if thrown properly, will start a chain reaction among the pins. The hooking motion of the ball's trajectory results from the way in which the middle and ring fingers are released as the ball is thrown onto the alley. The curve ball is difficult to control. It is actually an exaggerated version of the hook shot, but because of the side path, there is more room for error in this shot. And the backup shot is seldom used. It works from left to right, the exact opposite of the other three shots. Most professional players advise against using this type of shot. Equipment and clothing. The two essential pieces of equipment needed in bowling are a bowling ball and a pair of bowling shoes. Clothing can be any comfortable, loose-fitting sportswear that allows room for free movement. Weight, span, and pitch must all be considered in selecting a bowling ball. Span is the distance between the thumb hole and the finger holes. Pitch is the angle at which the finger holes are drilled. With regards to weight, the rule of thumb is to select the heaviest ball that can be handled with ease. Choosing a ball that is too heavy and becoming fatigued from using it defeats the purpose of the game. A good pro shop can help a beginning bowler decide where holes should be drilled in the ball to ensure a comfortable fit. The choice of bowling shoes depends upon which hand the bowler uses to roll the ball. For example, if the bowler is right-handed, the left shoe needs to allow sliding while the right shoe provides the necessary traction. The opposite is true for left-handed bowlers. Bowling notes and news. Bowling is one of the most popular pastimes in North America. Friends, families, and other ordinary folks meet at local lanes to bowl a few, few frames. Kids and grown-ups alike enjoy the game. Because recreational bowling doesn't require long hours of conditioning for strength or endurance, everybody gets a chance to bowl, both young and old. On the competitive circuit, it's a different story. Concentration, practice, and the development of natural skills all go into making a championship bowler. While everybody knows somebody who bowls, few people know the champions. Bowling has its own professional circuit, just like other spoils. 